Now, it was like I fell asleep, right, in a bed, like ripped open inside my dream, and the devil was trying to kill me, bring me to hell. Then I was down there, right, and they was cracking up jokes. And it was just so hot, I can't explain it. I had uh, sneaked out of there because they was too, they were laughing so loud. Nobody, like, paid attention to us. And I was in chains, so my hands got so hot and burnt through them. So I walked out. Well, I didn't walk, I ran through this cave. It was dark. Yeah. And after I got through the cave, I was at, I woke up. And that's how you know God real. Yes. You say you saw the devil? Yep. How did he look? He, he was horn. he had bull horns on, around his mouth right here. Mm -hmm. And up here he had like horns like a buffalo and a rhinus. Mm-hmm. And... He had a dragon tail, half whale, half tiger, tiger claws. He tried to eat me, and his teeth was like a shark, but sharper. I, I, and he was half human. I just don't know how to explain it in words. But is he just so ugly? Trust me, you would not want to see him. Was I'm you gonna, scared? Yes, I was. Why do you think the devil wants you to go to hell? Because he know God can use me for better things than that, what I be doing. Mm-hmm. And he know you're... Better you're, than what I be You're doing. chosen. You're chosen by God, and the devil knows this. And so he wants to show you that he wants to take you to his hell. Did you see any people down there? Yeah. What was happening to them? There was in whip. Were they screaming? Yeah, very loud. How did they look? I didn't pay attention to them because it was like something telling me not to look. Mm. And how did the demons look? Uh, like, same as a Satan, but a little not bad. Not like, as scary? It was like, no, not as scary. It was like, one was a witch, one was a... Like, looking like Freddy Krueger, one Michael Meyer, and one looked at like Michael Jackson when he turned into the zombie. Jesus. But he got ugly. Then, one of them was like that old lady off of Michael Jackson. That was a zombie. It was just scary. I don't know how to explain. And they had you in chains? What were they doing to you? Nothing. And you said you was laughing, and that's why you escaped? I mean, they was laughing. That's when you escaped, when they was all laughing, and they didn't pay any attention to you? Nope. They didn't pay no attention, because they was laughing at the other people, and they ran out of demons. In my dream, super stuff be happening, so they ran out of demons, then... He started to make more while he was making them, and they were laughing, uh, he went, I was in the other side. I ran to the other side of hell. Then I jumped out of this, like, big hole out of the ground. And then I just broke back up. And then then you told me that sometimes it'd be hard for you to wake up. Yeah. It'd be like two hours or eight hours of sleep. And the devil would be, like, trying to get inside of me while I'm in my dreams. That's why I'd be, like, trying to stay woke. Sometimes I don't be knowing what would be happening because it'd be all black. This one time I was sleeping on the floor, a witch got into my dream. What did she do? She had made me not be able to open my eyes for one minute, and I couldn't get up. You got to plead the blood of Jesus, and that witch will go flying back into hell. Always say Jesus. Always call on Jesus. All right? Uh-huh. All right. Now, I got to finish this. The witch, she started. Sorry, a little.
the little witch flesh showing. <laughs> started to like like lift me up and started to throw me and stuff. So I just just said Jesus, and she just she stopped. Yeah, because you always have to say Jesus. Have you have it ever happened to you when you try to say Jesus' name? Yeah. And they try to they try to paralyze your mouth and make you not be able to talk. Like blood bending. All right, one time I was up on the bunk bed and on top, and demons started messing with me. It was like black stuff. Tiny black stuff crawling on the wall, crawling on the dresser. Then I saw a centipede messing with the wood. Then it like it turned into a worm, a black worm, and started like scrubbing itself onto the uh you know the part that you open the drawer, a counter drawer, I mean a drawer. Mm -hmm. There was all over it. I was like, Oh mama, mama, wake up and it was a bee trying to rip up the lamp. That was nothing but demons. They can transform themselves into bugs and creatures and stuff. They're still demons. So, yeah. I guess this is the end of your testimony. I thank you for sharing it. It's very deep. How old are you? Eight. And what is your name? Aaron. Okay. Thank you so much for your testimony. Appreciate it. You're going to help a lot of people with this. Say bye-bye. Bye. Smile. <laughs> Hello, um, <clears throat> today's video is a little different. Uh, there is a woman you know, on the internet that her name uh, is Maria Nieves and she, um, Lord Jesus, took her to hell, you know, that uh, he, he saved her, you know, that she, she has a story where she first describes how he saved her from cancer and then she describes her story in hell, but all of this is in Spanish. And I think this is important important enough for all the people to hear her information of when she went to hell, you know, to hear her story. Um, and, and so I translated the part that she described about hell, I translated it to English, you know, to the best of my ability. Uh, there is a testimony that she has here that's in Spanish, uh, but she gives permission she gives permission for everybody to, you can put this on the internet or on the radio, put this anywhere you want. So she gives permission for this information to go onto the radio. And so I'm going to play that real fast. And then I will give you the translation of her trip to hell. Por haber dado la oportunidad de que este testimonio sea transmitido a toda la red, internet, televisión y radio. Primeramente doy la gloria a la... There she goes. Okay, and then she gives glory to God. So, okay, so here I'm going to just give you the direct translation as best I could. You know, so here, uh, Maria Nieves, the lady who was saved and accepted Lord Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And he took her on the journey to hell and this is her testimony. She starts off that when she went down to hell, that it smelled like humidity and spoiled water. So there are different rooms, and this is what she saw in those rooms. She saw her aunt who worshipped idols. Her aunt was covered with flames, and her flesh was being burnt. Her mother, who worshipped witchcraft, was in hell. She also saw her mother undergoing the same torture. She asked for mercy for her mother, and Jesus said no. And Jesus told her, Neither idolaters, nor hechiceros, nor adulterers, nor fornicators have any right to enter the kingdom of God. Hechiceros is a Spanish word that I do not know the translation for, so I just left it like that. Okay, and then we have demons. She described demons. She said some are shaped like humans, others are disfigured and have their eyes in different places than where they should be. Some have two eyes, others have one eye, others have no eyes. You could smell burnt flesh, rotting flesh. And then she saw adulterers. 
Men were in a room with women wearing sexy clothes. The men would try to fall on the women, and the women would turn into demons and laugh at them. The men's flesh would be torn and become putrid, and they would run away. Then the women would become sexy again, and the men would come back, and it would be repeated. Okay. Then she saw a multitude of people, as many as would fit a stadium. They were fighting with each other. Demons would come in the crowd and torment them. The people in the stadium were liars, people with jealousy, and criticizers. This is what happens to them. Okay? Teenagers. There were a large yard, play yard, or gymnasium. There were gang members, and they were fighting, hitting bats to heads, hitting each other with chains, insulting each other, steel weapons, sharp objects stabbing each other. The demons were going in there with them. The demons had claws and would tear the hearts out of the teenagers. Okay, and then we have, there were many bars with chairs, some groups with women, they were drinking mixed drinks with ice. Everything looked normal. Then when they tried to take a drink, they found that the drink was made of acid, and it would burn their face, their throat, their flesh, their stomach. The people wanted so much to drink the beer or mixed drink, and they were in pain, but every time it would burn them, and they would catch fire, and they would be tormented. Demons would torment them, and demons would push them. Okay, and then we have, you know, all these are different, different groups, different things, you know, that she saw when she was in hell. So now we have many age groups, but there were many young people. They had knives, glass, and cutting themselves. They tried to commit suicide, and they kept stabbing themselves, cutting themselves with glass, but they couldn't die. She started to pass out for seeing so much desperation from seeing the young people try to commit suicide, but couldn't die. There was a nightclub with horrible music. The floor was not a floor, but it was made of fire. She saw her family, but she also saw herself. People were dancing with the horrible music, but they danced in the fire. If she did not give herself to Jesus, then this is where she would have gone. Demons would torture them and pull the arms off the people and tear their flesh. So I missed up. So it's off the people. And so we have rapists were also there. People were getting their necks broken and they were stabbed by knives getting burned, and their flesh torn apart. She begged to leave, and Jesus put a passport in her hand and said she could go. She saw affliction and desperation. She wants to tell all young people that dancing, liquor, drugs brings you nothing but torment. 24 hours a day, 35, 365 days a year, because hell is real. Don't just go to church once a week, then go home after church and continue ignoring Jesus the rest of the week. You need to build the relationship with Jesus, learn the gospel, and speak the gospel to others. Hell is real and it's painful. Introduce your children to the Bible. Tell them the Bible stories. All of this information, including this paragraph, came from the testimony uh, that I tried to translate the best I could into English. And thank you, everyone, and God bless. Hello, Hope All is Well. My name is Khalil, and I want to share with you all, whoever may uh, see this video, um, God willing, everyone that uh, is supposed to see it sees it. Uh, this video is spare of the moment. I um, apologize for not having something more rehearsed. Maybe I'll do it after uh, this one, but I do feel compelled right now in my spirit just to um, make a video unrehearsed and honestly uh, 
feels very important, like urgent. So I just got to do it. And I got to try to be obedient to the spirit whenever I can. So anyway, make a long story short. Um, I am uh, obviously a follower of Jesus Christ. I uh, seen hell. Uh, the Lord showed me hell um, in 2008. Uh, I'm not sure what month of that year, but he definitely did uh, show me it. Um, obviously, I I can't say that I don't try to think about him uh, often. Um, I do think about it often. I've had a, a number of, I guess you would call them supernatural experiences, where God has uh, revealed to me certain things. Um, but anyway, make a long story short, uh, 2008, I was in the uh, vehicle with my uh, wife, and we were leaving a neighborhood that we were staying, staying in, rather, in Charlotte and C. Um, upon leaving the neighborhood, I looked up out the window while she was driving. And I looked up out the window. I didn't tell her. And I told her eventually, but I didn't even tell her when I seen it that minute. Um, I wasn't scared because uh, I did feel the presence of God uh, near me. And um, I'm, I wasn't sure why he was showing me. Uh, but... Obviously, it was for a reason, uh, being that God doesn't do anything for no uh, reason, for no reason at all. But anyway, I look up in the sky, and there's a still picture of hell. Still picture, yes. I didn't see anything moving. Um, didn't hear any screams. I seen uh, what is described as the lake of fire. What is described, like every other uh, testimony of uh, people claiming to have um, seen hell or been to hell even, um, pretty much the same description. Uh, I did see, uh, male and females, obviously, and a lake, um, a lake that seemed like it was more of a river. It was like around a bend type, like, like curving around. Um, I'm going to try to describe it to you best. So, um, bear with me if you would, but a lake more, so it seemed like if anything, it was maybe a river leading into a lake or, uh, some, yeah, a river leading into a lake, but it seemed like it was on the shore. And I did see people. Again, I seen male and females. Um, I did not see uh, their race or anything. In fact, I didn't even see any eyes, any mouths, or anything at all. I, uh, the picture was in black and white. It was a still picture. And uh, I did, and I could tell that the people were trying to get out of the lake of fire. They were trying to... Um, get to the shore now on the shore the strangest thing and um it is what it is i mean if you listen to all these testimonies they're all they're all unreal to be honest with you but it is reality i do believe in my heart i know in my heart that this is absolutely real um and hell is real uh but anyway there was a demon uh if i can describe the demon it was a um like Opposite of an angel, pretty much. Seemed like he was an angel, but on the bad side. Did have wings. Had his hands, or had his looking down at the uh, people in there with his hands crossed, as if he was a guard or something. Um, strangely, he wasn't pushing any of them, but he was standing in between two giant hands. I seen giant hands and arms, literally like this, and they, the hands itself were bigger than him. Um, I am 5'10". Obviously, the hands were bigger than me. If I could use my uh, imagination, I can imagine, I can say probably the hands could push anybody that was like 7 foot. It can push them back people-wise. And it can at least push probably about... If you were to <laughs> grab some little uh, Barbie dolls or some little McDonald's men and get about 12 of them for each hand and just keep pushing them back, that's a good description of what I saw. Uh, giant hands. Why? I don't know. I didn't see the giant person or where the hands were coming from because, again, it was a picture. I don't know how Jesus did it. I don't know how uh, God showed me. I still don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Um Honestly, I just looked up in the sky and it was a still large picture of hell. He didn't have to tell me it was hell. I knew it was hell. My soul and my heart, I knew it was hell. I'd never seen it, but I knew it. I knew exactly what I was seeing. Another strange part that I uh, noticed were um, creatures inside the lake of fire um, with eyes, sort of like uh, hippo eyes. If you can um, imagine hippos looking out of the water while they're in the lake and all you see is their eyes. I've seen that inside 
I mean, I'm not saying, I don't know exactly what they were, uh, what it was, but again, that's the only thing that I can describe it uh, as far as now they weren't burning, of course. I'm assuming they, you know, had something to do with that torture in there, but um, for you people that like to hear, you know, scripture behind it, you know what I mean? Uh, simple Revelations 21 and 8, I mean, that's it. Um, that is the most authentic, you know, I mean, description besides all the other ones that's in the Bible. But, you know, that one specifically talks about uh, their proportion will be in the lake that burns with fire, sulfur, which is the second death. And that's one that comes close of it because it talks about liars, adulterers, uh, sexual immoral, and uh, murderers, things that I saw. But read that. I mean, that's just for people, you know, just for those people who just got to... <clears throat> You know, hard at heart, don't want to believe, you know what I mean? And and I'm not sitting here saying that it's something to just believe. I mean, let's face it, you know what I mean? I don't care who you are on a spiritual level. If you're on earth, you're on earth. And while you're on earth, this is the reality. What's the reality? Our natural. This is our senses. And with that being said, sometimes it can be a little challenging to uh, receive spiritual insight or, in, you know what I mean, be enlightened by spiritual things. So, you know, I'm not knocking you, but at the end of the day, man, the evidence is there, man. Um, it's there. Again, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. You know what I mean? I'm supposed to. It's just, I guess, I never had the urge to actually make it publicly known. Um, but by way of uh, YouTube as of now. And I guess I'll start, you know, telling people as the Holy Spirit leads me to. Um, I didn't get saved once I seen hell. I was saved prior to. So that didn't make me... Uh, you know, give my life to Christ. Um, again, I mean, I'm saved. You know, I mean, even if I, even though I seen that, I still, I didn't f get scared or anything. As if I was going because I wasn't under the impression I was going. I just seen hell. That's the only thing I can say. I seen it. So, um, again, it's out here. I don't know what this is for. I mean, I'll, hopefully, it'll reach you. And you know, as usual, I just recommend that you find. Christ, that you give your life to Christ, that you always repent, always repent as the Holy Spirit lets it known to you, even us as believers, the ones that's already in the faith, we have to always, always repent, always be striving, pressing towards the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so... I was doing that and um, praying against that. And the Lord took me to through that, that well that I was talking about to hell. And when I got there, I went to this part of hell that I never, ever um, had been to before. And it was a, it was a strange part, but it was so, what surprised me is how ordered hell was, like hell was put in order. It wasn't like everything was in chaos. Everything was so orderly down there. And I was there in the, in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit took me there. Sometimes people get taken places by angels, by Jesus. The um, Holy Spirit was taking me there. And I knew that he was there with me. And I was praying while he was there. And I was like, Lord, don't let any of these demons see me, shield me, and hide me from them. And I was like invisible. And I looked down and I seen this ugly little, uh, well, it was a big one actually, a green demon. And I was working on something. And I seen these machines. And then I seen these giant crates. And they were setting in lava. And if I could describe this place, it looked like. Um, hell in the future. That's the best way to describe it. Everything was, had so much technology there. Everything was in such order. And the one, the thoughts that were going through my mind was, who's building this, this place? And is, are the demons making the, the souls there build them? And I've seen um, the demon, one of the demons working on something. But then what caught my eye the most was these big, metal crates, uh, I guess you could call them furnaces, um, that were in the fire. And 
this really disturbed my spirit. And they were in the fire, in this, like, lava, and they're all, there's, and they just went on for, for this row of these metal crates went, went on for this long, uh, I couldn't see, so it went so far, I don't know how far it went, but um, there's so many of these metal crates, and they're in the, in the hot, molten lava, and I knew what was inside the crates. There was people inside them, and you couldn't hear any of their screams because they were in this metal crates. They couldn't get out. They couldn't get out, and the, on the lid of the, the crates, the lid was made of this face. It was like a metal face, and I'd never seen anything like this. The architecture of the of the face it was um, perfectly carved. Like these demons have such skills and um, because they used to once be angels. And so they have these skills to be able to have such architecture. And that's what what these souls are being stored in and they're in the metal crates. And just the face of the, the crate was coming out of the lava. The rest of the crate was in the lava. And I just remember thinking how awful, how awful it was. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because the Lord wants me to, not because I want to. The Lord wants people to know how real hell is and how awful it is. My mind can't make up this futuristic hell and this architecture and these demons and ugly demons with such detail in them. They're sweaty and green and ugly and so much detail. My mind's not making this up. I'm actually there in the spirit. I can feel, I can taste, I can touch, I can hear. All this stuff is real. I don't know how else to tell you guys. This stuff is real. This doesn't happen in any any other religion. This only happens in the true faith, the true reality, in Jesus Christ. And I want you guys to know that I don't want any of you guys to go there. I want all of you guys to be with me the Lord and all the rest of the body in heaven. And so please do all you can to um, to not go there. Repent in the Lord. Ask the Lord if whatever sin you're struggling with, if, if you can't overcome it, say, Lord Jesus, please help me overcome this sin. Please, Lord Jesus. I can't overcome it without you. I need your spirit. My spirit's weak, Lord. Help me to overcome it and just keep confessing it. And some of you struggle with some of these sins, and the Lord allows some of these sins to remain in some people because he knows that if he cleanses you of that sin, then you're going to be prideful because I hear a lot of people, once they get freed from a sin, they start looking down at everyone, and they start thinking, oh, I'm so much better than you. Look how good I am. Look how much I walk according to the, to the Lord, and you don't. God hates that mindset. He wants us to have that mindset. Remember that sinner who beat his chest and said, forgive me, I'm a wretched sinner. He beat his chest. And the Lord credited him as righteous, not the Pharisee who said, look at all I do. I fast. I do this, I do that. No, the Lord wants us to be humble in our heart and repent daily because there's still sin in you, all of you, everyone that is hearing right now that is on the Lord's hour, that's a human that hasn't yet been perfected in holiness. There's pride in your heart. There's filth that goes through your mind. And so ask the Lord, please, Lord, get that out of me. Matthew thirteen fifty, And throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I've seen a fiery furnace in that lava. It had a big face on it. It was it was just like, I don't know what that face was, the face of the demon. It was just like a metal face, um, a card, carved metal face that um, was, was designed for these big metal crates that were placed in the, in the lava. It was so awful. And please, please listen to the warning. Okay. And so... Um, I wanted to talk about something that is is helping me and helping a lot of people overcome their sin, and that's love. 
And so if you have love in your heart, then you're going to overcome so much sin so fast. So praying to have love in your heart for the Lord and for others is going to help you overcome. And it's the love that's given from the Lord's Spirit. So ask the Lord in your long time always for, to have love. If you don't have love for Him, ask Him. Say, Lord, please bless me with love for you because I don't love you like I should. I still ask that. I always ask that. Lord, I want to love you more. Please, Lord, help me to love you. Help me to love my brothers and sisters even when they're mean to me, even when they say harsh things, even when they're being prideful and are not understanding. Please, Lord, help me to love them. And um, I had this, uh, I was in the spiritual realm and I had these demons that they're attacking me and they're trying to get me to do some evil towards a sister in Christ. And this is in the spiritual realm. And I was I was fighting these demons by the power of love because at first the sister was doing something evil towards me and then I started to resist the evil with love. And I started rebuking them and I re- was able to rebuke them off of me, the demons off of me, and then I rebuked them off to her off of her and I bound them and they were thrown to the ground. And it was really awesome at that point then. I was asking the Lord to help me to destroy them. He shot fire through my hand. He shot, um, and the and the the sister and, and the Lord. She was helping me destroy them too. And she was shooting lightning at them. And um, so the Holy Spirit spoke through me and said, "Holy rain." And this rain is so cool. The whole, when the Holy Spirit does this, this is all Holy Spirit talk. I'm not boasting myself. This is Holy Spirit. So this is glory to Jesus right now time. Holy Spirit was saying holy rain and it rained on the demons and then he said holy ice and the holy ice froze the demons and and uh, it was so it was so neat. Well, the one demon was incinerated with fire and then they picked up the other one. The the sister and I picked the other one up and we dropped him off like a cliff, this frozen demon off a cliff and it just shattered into a bunch of pieces when it hit the bottom. And the Lord does such cool things. Um, and if you want to overcome the sin, then have love in your heart. John thirteen thirty four through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So I want everyone, if there's somebody that you don't love, somebody that you dislike, in your life and ask the Lord please Lord help me to love them I know they're my enemy I know they think they're this I know they think they're that so ask the Lord say Lord help me to love them and he's going to help you to love them okay Um, I had another um, journey to to hell and this is a really encouraging one I'm not going to talk about people getting hurt there um but I want to talk to you about what happened when I went there. I was taken to hell, um, and on the way to hell, I was shown all these demons, ugly demons, thousands of them, all different shapes and sizes. I really wish I could got that on video. Or as an artist or something that I could paint these things. These things, so many, all different shapes, a lot of them look like, what people say are aliens. A lot of them look like hideous monsters and thousands of them. I was taken to this arena, uh, some sort of arena in hell. And there is another girl that was in the spirit there as well. But I don't know if she knew that she was there because some people, they don't know when they're in the spiritual realm. The Lord's gifted me with the ability to know when I'm there or not. Um, sometimes I don't know I'm there. I'll, I'll start praying. The Holy Spirit will just start praying through me, and I'll think that I'm in a dream, but then all of a sudden I wake up, and I realize, oh, I'm not in a dream. I'm actually here in the spiritual realm. But the demons have this way to make people, to keep people from knowing where they actually are. They have different poisons and different devices they put on people's minds. But when the Holy Spirit starts speaking through you, ask the Holy Spirit, speak through me when I'm in the spiritual realm so that I know that I'm there. And then he wakes you up and you're there and you know, you're like, wow, this is real. 
and you can taste, you can touch, you can feel, you can run, you can fly, you can do whatever the Holy Spirit permits you to do, shoot fire from your hand, have power shoot out of your hand, as I talked about last week. Really awesome, cool, interesting battles, uh, Holy Spirit battles. Um, he doesn't, the Lord doesn't give this to a lot of people because there's also a curse that comes with it. And the curse is um, demons can mess with your mind. They they come to me and all the time they'll they'll say they'll have the most convincing way to somehow telepathically emit these thoughts to me, making me think that they're aliens. Like I know they're not aliens. But when they're doing that, sending these telepathic thoughts, they overpower my mind. And I think that they're aliens in that time. But the Lord's helping me through all of these battles to to rebuke that more and more and They'll say, I've heard them, they say all kinds of weird things. They say, oh, we're, we're aliens. Oh, we're, from, we're people from the future, and we're in the future people, they are not so healthy, so that's why they look sticky and oily and ugly like, like we do. And then the, the new one that, they're gonna, that they are planning to start saying to people is, oh, we're from a parallel universe. And people are going to believe this because these demons are incredibly deceiving. So thanks be to Jesus and the Holy Spirit who protects us from that, and that when we have Jesus in our lives, he shows us and reveals to us the truth. When we're following in obedience to him, walking according to his ways, he shows us what is of him and what is not of him. There's no parallel universes. There's no aliens. There's no people from the futures. There's demons. There's heaven. There's hell. So I need you guys to wake up. Um, if you're thinking anything about aliens or parallel universes or that's a lie from Satan, wake up, okay? And so please, Lord Jesus, anyone who thinks like that, wake them, Lord Jesus. And when I was in this arena in hell, I was watching this girl, and she was told to kiss this person who was claiming to be the prince of hell. And she refused. And I knew she was a daughter of God. She belonged to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit just started speaking through me. And he said, like I was on this platform and I just rose up. And I just started speaking. Um, it was the Holy Spirit speaking. The Lord was using me. I was just, I'm just a vessel. And he just started speaking and he said, you dare come against a daughter of heaven and the Holy Spirit was challenging all the demons that were there at the arena. There's thousands of them. There's thousands of them, you guys. So many. And you know what? None of the demons wanted to face the Holy Spirit in me. None of them. Why? First John 4.4 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is in us. And we have overcome the world because of that, because of what he did, not anything that we did, but because of what he did and because of the Holy Spirit in us who helps us to overcome our sin. That is the reason why we're victorious, and that is why Satan can't come against us, and he's afraid to come against us. Because... We have the Lord in us. So I encourage you guys, remember this. Remember that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Okay? First John 4.4. 4. Right. And the Lord um, showed me a really awesome experience. And um, sometimes when the experience is really so awesome, it's not that long. He only lets me see it for, for a glimpse. Like when he showed me the rapture before, I've seen the glory of God rising on the cloud and all the people being drawn to Jesus. One of the most beautiful things that God showed me, but it was only for like two to three seconds because it was such a significant event that just those two and three seconds that he showed me that, it was enough. And that he showed me that so long ago. And, and I was going towards Jesus on the 
on his cloud of glory. And I was so grateful that the Lord was doing that, that he was drawing me into him on his cloud of glory. And so it was so awesome to see you guys. It was so beautiful. Such a beautiful thing. Wait till you see it. The rapture, people think, oh, I'm just going to be brought up on a cloud or this and that. Wait till you actually see it. It is so beautiful. I just saw it for like three seconds. It is so beautiful. It's so awesome. The Lord Jesus is so awesome. In Ephesians 5.27 That he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Are you holy and without blemish? Are you truly ready for his coming? Repent your sins frequently. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Love Jesus with all your heart. I had a vision of Jesus three weeks ago. I had visions of heaven in the past. This is the first time of vision of Jesus in my life. I believe that it is time for his coming. That's why I saw him. I had rapture dream again last night. God reminds me again that Jesus is coming so soon. So be ready all the time. នេះជាទីបន្តដែលអស់ចារបស់ពិខុសងមួយអង្គនៅប្រទេសភូមិយ៉ាដែលបានស្លាប់ហើយរស់ឡើងវិញផ្លាស់ប្រែទាំងស្
សូមរៀបរាប់ពីទីបន្តលរបស់ខ្ញុំប្រាប់លោកអ្នកពីហេតុការណ៍ដែលបានកើតឡើងដល់ខ្ញុំប៉ុន្តែជាប្រធម Đối chí mân hút phía trang nơi bởi tế phù mê đài Hỏi quát bàn ai chú mô khiêm thầm thầm thịt bình Chú mô ní mê nây thầm đàm chờ Chí vết rô bó dương rô nâu chìa xa mạnh thầm đà Pí l khiêm miên ai dụ đọc bầy chân ám Khiêm bàn chốp riêng hỏi chắp đàm rô xì chì nẹ nê sát trầy tàm tụ Dương nê sát bàn trầy hỏi chôn kà l có bàn bóng kia đài Nâu tàm tình lê nâng stâng mô chùm nuôn nâu đâm bón y ra và đi đài l ta Vì mình ảy dụ đọc ra mùi chân ám khi nhóm bàn khai chìa nẹ đặc nòm krom nâu khăn nông tụp nầy sát Vì nụ khi nhóm bàn rù nâu khăn nông kò áp phở mên mà la ghi dọn Đại prae thà kò srei sát Cứ nâu phía khăn chương krom bồ gêl chìa sọc bàn nạc rà bọc khi nhóm Tì kênh lại nếp nâu prà hèl mùi rôi mai nì rà đầy krom rong gôn rà thê ní nầy prà tê rà bọc dương Ngay mũi bí khi nhóm miên ảy dụ đọc rầm bêl chân nằm Sầm nánh rô bò dương chọp bàn trầy chân mên tên Hai đòi bố tè chọp bàn trầy chân Cảm bư mũi thùm bàn chôn mô rô dương Vì bàn đánh tam dương Hai phía diêm vi bà hà mô lưu dương Dương phê nà Đôi chân ấy dương có chèo tụ dàng lươn Tèng xlon xlao xâm đau tờ rộng mặt chân nằm Trong bước nụ bàn đánh tam dương hai vì vọt còn tui rồi bỏ vì bấm bạc tục rồi bỏ dương Tui chia khám miên nà nà xa lạp Nơi khăn nông ở bà ta hẹt này có đôi Có ca vay bà hà rồi bỏ cổ bước này miên ảnh tì bốn mô lưu chì vứt khi nhóm nhàng khăn Khi nhóm lên chọn rộ xí nê xa trầy thiệt hai Hai tui đó tui rồi bỏ dương bàn lịch tờ khăn nông tực Đôi bước tài cổ bước vì bấm bạc Dương trâu vươn trâu lọp tờ phùm rồi bỏ dương vinh nơi dục nụ tam tục rốt chân nùl Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi và hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp Dương bàn căn tam bởi bê ni được chân này Ở rời dạ Pêl rộp rồi chân nằm mọc hời Pêl khi nhóm chô đo là ảy dụ đọc bởi bốn chân nằm bây khai Ní nơi chân nằm mùi bọn bởi bởi chất sợ bởi 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 Chân bàn khai chìa bị khổ Bởi cháu ảnh thị ca nơi vọt rồi bọc nhóm Bàn đã chú mô mùi thầm mây đọc nhóm Tam chú mô bởi 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 sát ná Đại chìa bởi bê ni nơi khăn nông bởi tì rồi bỏ dương Chúng ta thầm ấy rồi bỏ khi nhóm nơi bí nút cư Uy Nà Ta Pà Nê Ta A Sin Thu Rì Dạ Nơi bí dương bù chìa sống Dương lên bảo chúng ta cầm nợt đầy lợi bộ mặt đài đã ai nụ tiết hơi Vót đây khi nhóm bù nút chúng ta mang đà lê Kìa Y Kà Sán Kìa Yng Bế chào ạ thị ca chúng ta Uy Gia Đi Lá Kìa Nị Cánh Sa Gia Đào Uy Gia Đi Lá Kìa Đâm Nánh rồi bỏ lộn Rinu luk chìa bè xong đó là bây lạc bánh Lưu chìm kì tàng ơ nơi bà tì phù mìa Cúp khí nha sốt tài xóa luk Hai mà nụ tàng ơ ai đầm lây nâng cổ rụp luk Nông thả nạ chì cựu thông mùi rụp Chúm nì dì đôi chân ế Pro nơi chân năm mà bọn bọn bù rơi bạch sập bấy Luk bàn sụp cốt phí mùi rụm bích Nơi bê miên cựu thả nạ chả ra cho tàm rụt dùn Cả sụp cốt rụp bò luk thư ở cựu khí nha miên ca phí nhẹp ai chì khăng Nhóm bù bàn bà mùi và xa hài Nhóm bàn phí yếm thư chì xong lọ bàm phốt Hài khâm prăng prát tà bát tàm cụp tiàng thoa vi nây Tiàng phần màn đại bà bút bàn xâm đài mộc Nhóm đâm nạ kàl mùi Nhóm bàn chôl tờ rô nâu ai tì xmò sàn mùi Đàm bây bàn to phí vi nê thoa Bà xong khá hát đài l bất chì chong xuol Sẽ kì đây bất rồi bà bà bút Sốt tài bàn thư đôi khí nhóm nê đài 
លោកខ្លះចូលទៅក្នុងព្រៃជ្រៅជាកន្លែងដែលគេរស់នៅជាជីវិតដែលលះបងខ្លួនឯងឈប់គិតពីខ្លួនឯងហើយធ្វើខ
ีเปรซองดอลลาร์บายมาเนบานสลับดอยกรุธนาลานเดลชนามมาปอนปมบุรยแปดสบายสมุอุยจาดิลากิยานิกันสยาดาวชมบานสูเตมียมริโนธาเฮดเอาไว้บานชีสมดายเปรกรูจารบอกชมบานจอบนขนมบังเพลิงนี่ดูชนะเฮดเอาไว้บานจีลูกนขนมบังเพลิงนี่ลูกชีกรูมันเนี่ยหล่อนะลูกบานตีสนาในขนมกัดใส่ใส่อัดชมูตาเนี่ยชีมนุกหรือจีชไกทอตีสนานี่บานช่วยมนุกรอบวันเนี่ยเอายุลธาเกี่ยวกับมนุษย์มีนลำไรประสาทลึกจึงสัตว์เดรัจฉานใช่ไหมนะสัตว์นรกหรือยังหาวทามียมริตุบันสไลท์แมนกอดชีครูเนี่ยดอลอ้อปนแต่กอดมันบานชื่อดอลเปรียสุครีดอยเฮดนิฮัยบานชีกอดนิวขนมนรกดูใช่ไหมบรรทุกโมกเขียมบานตัวตูดบังกอบอ่อยมือเติมมนุษย์เนี่ยติดได้กับปุ่งแต่นิวขนมเพลิงเขียมบานคืนบรอมเนี่ยมีนเสาะเวงจองสระบสัมยะโจมกหังชวิงลูกก่อเปะสบองใจโปได้ขยมบานสู้มียมริโนธาตาอันนี้เชียนนนาเมียมริชลายธาอันนี้คือเชียนเนี่ยได้เองกรุบบูชีชมุกุตมาขยมสระงะเจ็ดเมนเต้นดอยคืนกุตมาเนื้อขนมสถานรุขยมบานประกายตอวาธาตีกุตมาประกอบดอยทออาหึงซาเมียนจารยาสัมบัติลอตรมตรนาเฮ็ดเอาไว้บานจีลูกกลมปุ่งรงตุกในขนมบังเพลิงนี่ดูใช่ไหมมียมริชบานสลายถ่ามันทาลายกวาดละอ้อยานาตีกวาดมกกันลายนี้ปีปลุกกวาดมันบานชื่อดอลเปรียเดลกุ้งเนื้ออ๋อกอลจีนิกบรรทัวมกเข้มขึ้นบรอมเนตีดมือตัวดูจีกวาดสลีเปไอสัมทานตีหินกวาดมีนรบบูเนื้อดำตรุงอย่างทมเข้มกว่าสู้ถ่าตาบรอมนิจีนาดักนรุชลายถานี่คือเชียองสันมีตัวปฏิวัติปฏิภูมิเขียมบ้านลือสมเลงปรับท่าองสันเนื้อตีนี้ปลุกกวาดบานบิดบิ้นหายสำหรับกริชบอสัตปนแต่ได้ลือเชียงเอาไว้จังอ๋อโดยปลุกกวาดเหมือนบ้านชื่อดอลเปรียสุกรีเนื้อปฏิภูมิเมียนสุพีสัตมวยปูถ่าแต่เห็นเหมือนเจสลาบตีกิรุ่งเนื้อเชียอัมตะบนแต้มีนสมเลงมุยปรับขยมถ่ากองตัวสถานรุกอมีนสุพีสัตมุยได้ปูลถ่าแต่เห็นเหมือนเจสลับเมนปนแต้กีจกมอกทานรุกเจอัมตะขยมมือตื้อหายคืนบรอมเนตินในขนมบังพลึงกวาดมีนมีทมกบูหายมีนเปียอากรอมีนกันดาวหนึ่งแคลนเอาได้หายกวาดมีนรบูอย่างเจริญเอาทั้งไงกวาดมีนมีกบูเชียงมนุษย์นาแตงอ๋อมันได้ลืมมีนนาดูกวาดลายปีกวาดเลียสันทึงได้ดาวกวาดคืนมีนประวัยประมวยหัดหนึ่งมวยจำอามมียมริชหรือสไลน์นรุนุกปรับถ่าบรอนิชมุกลิยัดเวียนเนื้อขนมทานรุนิปีปลุกวิบานประมาทมือเงยดอลเปรียดอกกุงเนื้ออักลหนึ่งดาวิดเนี่ยบำราตรุงยมันยุลซ่ปลุกยมันดังถ่ากลิยัดเชียนนนาหายดาวิดเชียนนนามียมริชปรับขยมถ่ากลิยัดมีนกอดตุกนื้อขนมกุมพีระบอกคริสบอสัตเนี่ยมันสกอลกอดตีนื้อปีนี้ปนแต่เนื้อปีเนี่ยคลายเตยจีคริสบอสัตเนี่ยนั่งดังถ่ากอดเชี่ยนนาหายบรรทัพมกขยมเตยบานน้อมเตยกันลายมวยติดเนื้อตีนุกขยมเคยแต่เนี่ยมีนแต่เนี่ยกรอกับปุ้งรีบจำบริโภคอาหารละงี้ขยมก่อสู้ถ่าตาโนนาจำเอ็นมาหุบอาหารอ่อยมนุษย์ตรงนี้ดักนรุชลายถ่าปุ่นเนกรอตรือเรียบจอมอาหารโดยครูนัยปนแต่ปุ่นเนมิ้นอ้อยเนกดอตีจำอันอ้อยปีละห้าตรือบานเรียบจอมรุ่ยสำหรับปุ่นเนมิ้นกีบานองคุยโจดำใบบอริพกเนปีกิจับดำพลิมมิ้นใส่อย่างกระหอยหลังปุ่นเนมิ้นตึงนุกกีคอมบอริพกอย่างระห้าบมพดดำใบกับอ้อยชลุปุ่นกีปีบะดอดังหามจีคลังโดยปลุกแต่ใส่ปุกกีตรีบริโภคอย่างเลื่อนปลุกกีคลายบัดลุยถ้าบัดลุยคือจิตเรียกระบอกกีบรรทัพมอกมีนเมยมริมุยติดบานดาวมรกยมหายขยมก็คืนสัตว์มุยมีนกาเงี้ยจีเนื้อรุ่งบรรชูลเพลิงปีกรอมบังเพลิงนู่ดำบีอ่อยเพลิงนู่เคดาวจอบระหูสัตว์นู่บานสู่ขยมถ่าแต่เนื้อตรีโจตรีขนมบังเพลิงนี่ได้หรือ
ขยมชลายถ้าเตขยมมกตีนี้กรอนตายสังเกตมือปนนออาการะระบบสัตว์นุ่งได้กำปงแต่ดเป็นชูลปลืงกูไอ้คลายนะสัตว์นุ่งเมียนสไนด์ดับเนื้อเลือดมาลหายเมียนลมเป้งมุ้ยเนื้อได้หายเนื้อจงลมเป้งนุ่งเมียนพลายปรำเปิลสดแต่มุดมุดสัตว์นุ่งปรับขยมถ้าเนื้อนี้ยี่เต้าหายคือเนื้อมกตีนี้กรอนตายสังเกตมือปนนอปรุงเนื้อตีนี้ขยมโรคสมุนเนะมันคืนสอโดยฉะนั้นเนื้อหมกตามหน้าโจเตวิ่งตามหนุ่ยจ่อสัตว์นุ่ยบานจงอลเตวิลสอกกระได้ขยมบานตาการปีดมูหมกมุนปีเด็กขยมบานหมกดอลบังเปลืองนี่ขยมบานดาอย่างยูโรโฮดดอลจึงขยมเจนชิมขยมชื่อจับเฮยกระดาวเจี๊ยคลังตีบมพดกรอยปีบานดาอริยะปีประไฮจีใบหมาหมกขยมบานหมกดอลเปลือมวยอย่างถมเขียนบันดาตามเพลนุออกเรียะปีลมุยอย่างยูเกรลโรฮดดอลบานหมอกดอลเพลบันใบมุยหายมีนเพลมุยใบเตือขังชวิงทมนะก็มีนเพลมุยโตบอดเตือขังสดำเนื้อดำเพลบันใบนุ่มมีนบงกูสัญญาดะถ่าเพลบอดเตือชวิงคือสำหรับอ่อนเนี่ยแดนมันชื่อดอลเปรียอมิจฉาเยซูคริสไอเพลโตบอดเตือขังสดำคือสำหรับเนี่ยชื่อดอลเปรียอมิจฉาเยซูคริสขยมเมียนเจ็ดจองดังถ้าตาเพลทมติเลียนุกนอมชูตือไอหน้าโดยเช่นขยมกระดาตือตามเพลนุกสะมือนขยมเคยเมียนมนุปีเนี่ยกำปงดาเนื้อมุกขยมจำง่ายประมาณชีใบรอยแมดขยมคำดาไอตัวนดาใบบานดาจีมวยได้ปนแต่ขยมดาเหมือนตัวนกี้ซอตุกใบจีขยมคำดาเลื่อนอย่างนาก็ได้โดยเช่นขยมก็เวลมกรอยมกรกเพลบำใบนวิงขยมบนต่อตามมือบรอบปีเนี่ยนุขนองกาได้กี่กำปงได้เคลียบปีขยมเนื้อตามเพลาถมนุปีเนี่ยตึงปีบานเตาดอลจงเพลานุสลับแต่เมียนกี่จักสำลับเพลียบมวยลมปิดบรอบแตงนุบานใส่แรงแตงชื่อจับอย่างคลังหายขยมก็ยมได้ปีขยมคืนหายกาได้บานกาแรงดอลปุกี้ปีนุขยมบานโยลถาเพลาดอลถมนุบันจับดอยกรุตนะอย่างถมดอลอ่อเนี่ยได้ตามเพลนุขยมกบานจับดามดาตามเพลโตจุมนุวิ่งคือเจ็บเพลรบอนเนจือเปรียเยสุกริกรอยปีทวดมนาอริยะเปลมวยมาหมกสลับแต่เตยริบเนลือเพลนุบานปลายตือจีมีสดเพลมีนี้จีมีสดลอนะรหดดอลชลเคยรูปรบอขยมบานยังใช่ไหมเนเปลขยมมือหมกครามบรรทัดหมกมีนบรอมเนจสลีเปะซอโชนเนมุกขยมหายขยมกบานลื้อเกจเรียงจำเรียงปีรุ่งเมนเตนโอจำเรียงเอาไว้บอริสต์หายปีรุ่งไว้มาเลยจำเรียงนู้ปีรุ่งนะหายก็มีนในลื้อจำเรียงได้ยืนเรียงทวายบังกลมในขนมเปรี้ยวเฮียลือแผ่นในนิตเตอร์ติบุรอสลีเปะซอนู้บานบอบูลขยมเอาดาชิมวยกวาดขยมก็สู้ตาลูกชิมวยไว้ปนตาลูกมันบานชลายตอบขยมตีกลายเป็นขยมบานสู้ชมุกกวาดประมุยดองบรอนุกก็ชลายถ้าขยมจีเนกันกูนสาวสถานสู่สถานสู่คือจีกันไล่มุยดอลอวิสัยนะไอเหล่านี้เนกมันอายเตอร์ตีนุบานเต้ปนต้เบอร์เนกดาวตามเปรียสุกรีเนกอายเตอร์บานกลายปีชีวิตระบอเนกบานบรรจบในเรือแผ่นใดบรอนุชมุกเปโตรบรรทัดมอกลูเปโตรบานส้มเอาขยมองคุยจ่อหายกวาดบานบางไฮอ้อยขยมคืนกันลายมุ้ยเนื้อตึกขังจึงลูกเปโตรมีประสาทส้มมือตึกขังจึงหายมือเปรียบังการมนุษย์ชอขยมบานคืนเปรียดอกกุ้งเนื้ออกาลปีจำไงเปรียบมีนบรรทุลตึกันเตวดามุ้ยถ้าโจยึงบังการมนุษย์เตวดานุกบานองบอเปรียถ้าส้มกมบังการมนุษย์หมอกไอ้รูกีหนึ่งทุ่ยเข้าอ้อยกินหนึ่งทุ่ยอ้อยเปรี้ยงปลุยขนมพิซซ่าผู้มีมินนี้ตรองถ่ากินหนึ่งทุ่ยอ้อยเปรี้ยงบักมุกปนเตะเปรี้ยจีมิจ่าในเตะบังการมนุษย์หมอกดาดายเปรี้ยจีมิจ่าบานพลมขยอลเตลือมนุษย์หายมนุษย์ก็มีชีวิตรูลางเปรี้ยงอ้อยชุมบรอหนุกหมอกถ่าอาดัมบรรทัดหมอกลูกเปโตรมีนประสาทถ่าบานเฮยจูกราบลางหายตลอดเตะที่กันไล่ยระบอเนี่ยวิ่งจบสมนิยายปรับมนุษย์ได้กรุบทวายบังคุมเปรียบพุทธหนึ่งเนตได้ทวายบังคุมรูปสำนักอ้อยกีดังส
អស់អ្នកដែលសងអគារធំធំសម្រាប់ដាក់រូបសំណាក់និងអ្នកដែលធ្វើរូបសំណាក់ក៏នឹងត្រូវទៅនរកដែរអស់អ្នកដែលខំ
ขยมปันปรับเกถาเอาไว้เอาไว้เตียงปนมานได้เยื่งบานชื่อนุกเชี่ยสกัดได้พูดพอตีมนุษย์มนีมีนกาพิยาปนะปลุกกีกรุบนี้สดแต่บานดังถาขยมเชี่ยซ่องกันตามทวบินัยดอตรมตรมรูปหายมีนสกัดได้อุซ่าขนาดไหนนะนิวขนงเปรียพุทธศาสนาเนื้อปฏิภูมิเปรมนุษย์สลับเกสอดเสชมุหนึ่งอายุระบบบกกลนุเนื้อปีคางกระดามชูเนื้อปลูกสองสกุลเตียงชมุเตียงอายุหายหนึ่งชนะได้บานบูก็ดูชนะได้คือเตยบานเกสอดเสดักเนื้อปีคางกระดามชูชมุขยมเตยบานเกสอดเสจบหนึ่งกระดามชูหายชีมนุษย์สลับรวยแต่ให้ปนแต่ลูกเนี่ยคืนสลับไอเหล่านี้ขยมเนื้อมีนชีวิตรู้ได้สร้างโลกพลูได้รู้ปีสลับลางเวงบรรจุประเตียเรื่องราวโดยบ้านเรียบรอบบุกนี้กอดบ้านบรรทอทวีตีบรรทออย่างสมตรองจบชินนิดอมปีเปรียอมจ่าประเยสุ Don't go to hell An artist from South Korea was taken to hell by the Lord Jesus Himself This artist has been attending all-night prayer meetings since April of 2009 and continues to do so. It has been over one year. As I prayed during these all-night meetings, I grew to love Jesus more than ever. One day, Jesus came and said in my heart, "I will show you the deeper things of heaven." I thought I was going to visit heaven, but instead, I had visited hell. As soon as Jesus spoke into my heart, we entered into the spiritual realm. But Jesus took me, and He showed me hell first. As I followed Jesus, I cried the whole time. Spirits of snakes are filled in the alcoholic drinks and in cigarettes that people smoke. Jesus took many people and showed them hell. I see countless people falling into the eternal deep sea of the fire of hell every single day. Tell the people what you have witnessed in hell. Tell the people how awful and gruesome hell is. You must paint the scene of hell as if you are looking through the pain of my aching heart. I then began to hear moans, screams, and wailing sounds. Most people have a misconception about hell. They're deluded, and many people think only if you believe in Jesus Christ, they will end up in heaven. Some even think that once they die, that will be it. Nothing. Many believe as they think. Therefore, they live their lives as they desire. As people watch violent secular movies. Demons would actually torment the person's soul without the person realizing or knowing it. As the person watches the scenes from TV, their soul is in torment and in pain. The soul is damaged and wounded. Watching secular TV actually hinders a Christian's loving relationship with God, our bridegroom, Jesus. We can watch some news once in a while, but do not watch secular TV. As Jesus witnessed the sins committed by man, he cried. Satan and his demons would tie the bodies of sinners so tight with iron chains, and they would control us. Therefore, sinners would go deeper and deeper in sin. I'm pleading with you: do not commit sin. Do not live as you desire. In hell, the senses are hundreds of times more vivid than you actually feel in the physical realm, so the pain is more severe. This drawing shows people falling into the fire of hell. Draw this as if you are looking through my aching heart. As I was painting the scenes of hell, Satan attacked me severely. But I wanted to shout out to the world with Jesus' heart through these paintings. I wanted to deliver the aching heart of Jesus and how he felt so pitiful about those people who are falling down into hell every single day. These drawings show people being tormented on the cross. This shows the result of not wanting to eat the bread of life, God's precious word. This person did not want to eat the bread of life, God's word. This drawing depicts people who disregarded the will of Jesus and made their own decisions and pursued their own will. This drawing 
shows people who drank, partook in the evil of life, and ate prohibited things. Show the people the consequence of wounding the hearts of their brothers and sisters in Christ by their careless words. They must not be careless with their words. This drawing depicts the consequences of not speaking with care or love. The penalty for lying is severe. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 states, All liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10 states, Do not be deceived. Thieves will not inherit the kingdom of God. People who steal money will be tortured by needles. These next two drawings depict the persecution of the messengers of the full and true gospel of the Most High God. This drawing shows how murderers, rapists, and child kidnappers will be tormented. This woman is able to see outside of hell from the inside. She says, If only I could get out of here. But there is no escape from hell. Again, there is no escape from hell. This particular place in hell is for people who have committed sins by their own thoughts that were contrary to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are covered by countless maggots. Their whole bodies are wounded by insects. The maggots and insects in hell are so much bigger in size compared to earthly ones. Thousands of maggots and insects are going in and out of this person's mouth, ears, and head. They crawl throughout the entire body. These people were filled with their own thoughts and knowledge that were contrary to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This place in hell is for people who stubbornly adhere to their own philosophies and deceitful traditions of man and not after Christ. Those people who do not attempt to align their thoughts with God's will end up in hell. We must fix our mind and thoughts on Christ. These are also people who violate God's word and ignore God's commandments. They will be fried on a frying pan in hell that is filled by hell's fire. This part of hell is for people who did not spread or share the gospel. They did not evangelize the lost with the good news of Jesus Christ. This torment is for people who had ignored God's word and continued to commit sin. They are the ones who had performed evil in the eyes of the Lord. This part of hell is for people who complain and grumble, even silently in their own hearts. This place is for people who had complained and grumbled in their hearts. This place of hell is for men who had a family but cheated on their spouses or became gay or bisexual. They will be tortured by knives and spears. This drawing shows men who were sexually corrupted. Their private parts will be pierced every second. This hell is for people who worshipped idols, had evil thoughts, and were unbending in their evil ways. Revelation chapter 14 verse 11 states, Hell is endless. The smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night. If you do not repent, Jesus said in Luke chapter 13 verse 3, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The woman and the boy in this painting were a mother and son when they lived on earth. But because of the unbearable pain, they did not love each other. Now in hell, they try to escape the torment by stepping on top of each other. Jesus says, Focus on me. Focus only on me. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and crucify the flesh. Kill Satan or the devil that is living inside of you. This drawing shows us when we pray before God and repent, the armies of angels will come down and pierce the demons with their swords. Don't go to hell!
Christ, greet you in the name of Jesus. I would like to give you a Bible scripture concerning hell. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19. It talks about a rich man in Lazarus. And Christ was teaching about hell in this subject. And when Christ reveals hell to someone, the Bible always backs it up. So later on, you can read St. Luke, chapter 16, verse 19, to the very end of the chapter. And it tells you about a rich man in hell. It tells you how you can see in hell, how you can talk in hell, and how you remember your family while you're burning in hell. It's, it's really sad because when Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was told by prophets and apostles, my calling. He said, the day will come that you will go around the world and tell what I'm going to show you. And he said, I'm going to take you on a journey into the middle of the earth where hell is. And there I shall show you the abode of the dead. He said, there's levels, degrees of fire for the punishment of the sins of the flesh. And he said, what you're going to see will always be with you, but then I will give you a just balance. I will show you heaven. I will take you to hell three hours a night and for 30 nights, and then I will take you to heaven for 10, hour, 10 times, three hours a night. And I will show you the abode of the dead in hell and the glories of God about heaven. And this is what your purpose and your destiny, for your calling is dreams, visions, and revelation. And as Christ was telling me these things, I understood being with the Lord and what people meant when God appears to you. It was like a, it was so phenomenal, so beautiful that the presence of God was filling my bedroom. It was like two in the morning. And a brilliant, brilliant light filled the end of my bedroom. And when I began to uh, look at the Lord, he said to me, he said, Catherine, he said, I need you to tell the people of the earth what is down in the middle of the earth, which is hell. And in the latter days, I will raise up others that have the same supernatural experiences. And he said, you will be like a pioneer. You will begin to go and tell these stories all over the earth. And I will get your book published, and it will be in every major language in the world. Today, my book is in 89 languages in the world. I've been to 90 nations. And Jesus has done just what he said. He has taken me there. I didn't have the money to do it. He did this. And I've been to these nations, and I've seen lives change. People turn to the Lord Jesus Christ because they did not want to die and go to hell. And what I've learned by going and telling this story is, is that people don't know. People don't have knowledge about eternity without God. And this is what's been hidden from ages to our generation. That people do not understand what it is to die. Your soul come out of your body. And if you're ready to meet the Lord, you're saved and born again. Angels convey you to heaven and you go there. And there you get a brand new body. If you're 80 or 90, when you get into heavenly atmosphere, you look 28 years old. There's no law of death in heaven. But when you go to hell, your soul comes out of your body and you're taken by demons into the part of hell that you did the most wickedness on the earth. And this is what Christ told me. And this is what Christ showed me. So he began to speak to me on a level of I'll be with you. You'll not be alone, but at times you'll think I've left you, but I didn't. You just can't see me. And these things I'm going to share with you are very heartbreaking because I relive them sometimes. But Christ has the power, okay? His name alone, demons tremble, the name of Jesus. So he said, come with me and I will show you these things. And he reached his hand out to me. And my soul come out of my body, and I stood beside the Lord. I was in a spirit form. But I had all my senses. I could see, I could hear, I could turn, I could talk. And I knew my family was at home safe. And then I learned from the Lord as we walked among the dead and they talked to him. Um, I learned there was a place called the abyss, which is I read in the Bible. And the Lord told me the abyss was worse than where we were walking. Because demons would come up every so many holes and they would beat them with uh, kind of clubs and stab them and then more fire would come on them. And they would cry to say, stop, stop. 
and they seemed to me like they were reaping the sins of their flesh on the earth. And the Lord knew my thoughts. He said, this is exactly what's happening. He said, child, this is the torment for adulteresses and fornicators and some backside ministers. And he said, we're going to go through the left leg and then we're going to go through the belly. And then he said, we're going to go to the jaws and one of the arms of hell. And he said, there are demons all through here, but because of me and my power, I protect you. That's what he told me. And I went with the Lord high into the sky. And when we got so high up, there was the world far below, no bigger than a basketball. And then out of the earth came these round brown things that looked like tornadoes. These were like turning real slow and back again. And I said, Lord, what are those? He said, those are our gateways into hell. He said, we shall go down a gateway. And he said to me, he said, child, look at my left hand. And he had a ring of keys. These keys, he said, are death and hell. I can go down here anytime I choose. Jesus was about six foot four, very broad shouldered. He was not skinny at all. He had sandals on his feet. Jesus had a beard and a mustache. And his hair was a most beautiful color and it was down to his shoulders. And he had blue eyes. And when you look at his eyes, it's like eternity. There's no end to his eyes. And it's like he knows your beginning and your end without saying a word. And the peace that flows from Jesus is beyond any writer's description. And he said to me, Ahead of you is great horror, great sorrow, and great grief. He said, but I must show you these things that the world can understand about a place called hell. So we went down this gateway. And when we went down the gateway, inside the walls of this gateway was uh, demon powers. And when I say demon powers, I got to explain it to you, okay? There was some of them 12 foot high that looked like cockroaches. Some of them looked like huge spiders, 12 foot high. Then there was these creatures with fangs, with wings, uh, with bodies four foot across or five foot, 12 foot high and evil fangs, just like some of the pictures you see of them drawing demon powers. But they could not touch us because of the power of Christ. And you could hear them growl at us as we went down. And later on, I wrote a book with George Bloomer on deliverance. He explains what the cockroaches were and the spiders, which I didn't have the knowledge of then, because this was in 1976. God showed me these things. So I began to know and understand as we descended down this thing to hell, hell is real. And before, you know, I didn't really, really, as growing up in church, I heard hell preach, but the preachers just scared me to death. They would, you know, every Sunday we get saved because we didn't want to go to hell. But when I began to hear the sounds of the dead in hell, And we began to walk among uh, certain areas when we were down. We went to the left leg of hell first. He said, hell has a body in the middle of the earth. And he said, we will walk through these chambers. And he said, I'll not show you all of hell, but part of hell. And here's what he told me. He said, there's some parts of hell, child, I will not show you. It is too gross, too bad. And as I began to walk with him, I began to, we came down this corridor. We went to the left leg of hell first. And in the left leg were pits of fire everywhere. As far as I could see were thousands and thousands of pits full of fire, but in every pit was a skeleton full of dead men's bones. They would be no flesh, no blood, no organs. And they could talk, they could turn, they were a skeleton. But some of them had arms missing. Some of them had legs missing, and they could actually talk to you. They had a vapor.
vapor of smoke inside their skeleton. And as you looked at their bones, there would be a corrupt substance, like hanging, burning flesh, and worms crawling through that. And they could feel the worms, and they would scream and pull the worms out. And they began to talk to Jesus as we walked. And they said, Lord, we've been here many years, and we cannot die. We burn and no one cares. We cry and no one cares. He said, no man cares for our souls. And Christ would look at them and cry. And he was in the human form and he said, I sent preachers to you. I told you myself, you must be born again to spare you from this place. He said, I've done everything in my power to, to have you turn into me, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I shed my blood my blood on, on a cross for you. So if you would repent of your sins, you wouldn't come to this place. And I watched as the, the corpses begin to cry, no tears came. And I began to watch them reach up their bony hands and pray and it would really tear you apart because you would think, what if that'd been me when I was in sin, you know? What if that would be my neighbor? So your heart begins to change, you begin to think more about reality. You begin to think about eternity without God. And you begin to know that there is a real place called the abode of the dead. And it's Hades. I was an ordinary housewife. A mother. Now I'm a grandmother. And I didn't know. I, I didn't never have a high school, I mean a college education. I had a high school, but I was no Bible scholar. But God handpicked me for this journey. And every night he would bring me back around five in the morning and I'd cry and I'd weep. And then the next day he would take me again from two to five. And on one of the journeys into hell, he took me to the belly of hell. And the belly of hell was 17 miles high, three miles around. It was like um, stacked on top of each other jail cells. And you could see skeletons inside there burning and screaming and crying. And inside this place were souls of witches, warlocks, uh, demonic powers, people that used demonic powers to destroy people, and also the ones that served idolatry. And they would actually, there was a dirt ledge in front, like four feet around in Christ, would speak and we would run, not run, and we would move up by his power, you know, because God has all power. And we would go from level to level, and Christ would talk to us. And he came to this one man that was burning, he was screaming, he was on his knees. The Lord said he was on the earth, he was blind. He was blind in hell. He said he used his handicap to seduce many for witchcraft. I said, how did he do that, Lord? Because I didn't know. He said, child, what he did, he would uh, he would work curses on them. And he would tell them, give them money for his handicap and things. And all the time, he's doing his witchcraft on these people, like young people, a lot of young people, he said. Teenagers and things. And they didn't know because they had compassion on them. And he said, these things are true. That he, he did his witchcraft and the man heard him and he said yes I did and I heard the gospel many times but rejected you he said I never understood the sorrows of hell he said I served the devil on the earth and when I died this has been my torment I've been here for years and years wishing I had listened to the gospel wishing I had uh, told the truth wishing I'm sorry, I've been told the truth so I could escape this place of damnation. So this is what I learned. Even people in the occult, they come to my services. They think they're going to do harm to us. And God turns it around and saves them by many, many. Because they think that they're going to have a kingdom when they go to hell. They don't have a kingdom. The devil says, do you think that I uh, would give you a kingdom, share my kingdom with you? The devil tells them, I hate you as much as Christians. And there they're burning in hell. We're going to
going to talk about uh, witchcraft here a minute, and what I know is only what the Lord has shown me and told me. We were walking around the jail cells that were 17 miles high, and there was a, to my surprise, there was a rocking chair inside this jail cell, and there was a skeleton sitting in here with an old little ragged doll, rocking back and forth, screaming and crying. And Jesus said she's in great torture and great pain. And he said, I'm going to allow you to see uh, what she was before this happened and what she did. He said she was a soothsayer for Satan. And this woman is rocking, and all at once her appearance begins to change. Her whole countenance changes. So at first she had on a beautiful dress, let me see the dress of a, a, a beautiful woman. Then it changed to another thing. I think she changed into a uh, animal looking thing too one time. And in my book I talk about it, but she had many forms. And every time that happened to her, she would scream. And Jesus said she got this power from the devil by killing people. She would get more power. They would drink the blood. And she would get all this power where she could do this thing. And he said uh, she was killed one day. And she came here. And Satan let her be tormented like this over and over and over. And it is a uh, drastic change. And she feels it. And she screams in pain. And this happens to her all the time. And she looked at Jesus and she said, can't you help me? Can't you help me? And she reached to the bars, and I, it was like fle flesh had burnt in the skeleton. And my heart went out to her, and I tell this in many places. And I don't know if it's Spanish. I forget the nationality. It said there truly is a woman of witchcraft in your circle that sits in a rocking chair and works spells and curses and hexes on people. And they, they said it's real. And uh, there was a young man down there, he was 16 years old, and one of the other men saw him, a friend of mine. He saw him, he was assistant pastor of a church, and his family used to be in the mafia. He was uh, a pastor now. And it all to one night, he was asked, there was a man there preaching on hell, does anybody want to see hell? And he kind of laughed and went up and said, yeah, and the man laid hands on him. And he descended into hell immediately, and there was Jesus, and flames, and fires, and pits, and screams of the dead. And he said, we must hurry. I got three people to show you. So he runs, and he shows him his uncle. They're running through the fires, and hands reaching out to him. And his uncle had a suit on, and he had, someone had come in and shot him at his desk. And he appeared to him with a suit on in the flesh. Some people got allowed that to see and then he burned up in the fires and he said, warn my son of the family not to come here, that hell is real. And he's screaming, he said, I cannot die. And then the Lord said, hurry, we must go to the other side. So he went to the other side and there was his other uncle on his other side of the family. And he had died a horrible death. And he said, warn my son of family that this is real, that I don't want him to come here. And on the way back, Jesus said, there's one more person I want you to see. And as they're going back, he hears the scream of a voice of a young man who was 16 years old, used to be his neighbor. And he had been found with his head decapitated because he had been in the car. And he screamed and he said to him, warn the teenagers not to get in the car because it's real. And he said that I was serving the devil and uh, my, they took my head off and I ended up here in hell. And he was burning and screaming, and he was stuck between planks, burning. And the man, when he, the Lord brought him back to the altar, he was weeping and crying, and said, oh my God, I never knew hell was like that. And then I walked a little further with the Lord, and I was crying in the spirit, and I, and I was in the spirit, but there's no tears. And I saw a river flowing of fire and blood, skeletons chained together with a big black chain 
and the cries of the dead was echoing through the chambers of hell. And then you could hear the cries and the regrets and the moans and the screams of people wishing they listened to a preacher, wishing they listened to somebody, a woman, a man, a child, to tell them to repent of their sin. And the Lord walked me over to the river and said, look. And in the air, in the flames, was big black letters out of the book of Romans. And it said, Lovers of their own flesh more than God's commandments. Men loving men, women loving women, and no fear of God. It was the word of God written in the fight. And I looked and I said, Jesus. And I heard a man's voice scream, Why wasn't I warned? Why didn't somebody tell me? There was a place in hell where we went uh, to the belly of hell and all other kind of activities going on. There was other demons digging holes to bring more souls. There was fires, great fires, all through this and the screams of the dead. But there was one man's voice that was louder and his voice was so loud and screaming so hard. And Christ said, child, I'm going to show you something. I want to show you what it really means to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. To this man, blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I said, oh, my Lord. And so he took me over, and he would elevate me up in the air, guys, and there was this coffin. It was open at the top. It was old wooden coffin, old-timey coffin. And there was a skeleton on his back with real blood in his hands, and we were talking about the demons. They were 12 of them marching around the coffin with little slaps with spears. Because people in hell feel like they have a real body. They feel like that they're, they're in their own flesh. And he was stabbing this coffin in, in there with a, the man inside, and he would scream and torment him. And they do that 24 hours a day all the time. And he screams to get out, and he can't. And Christ appeared, and he saw him, and he said, Jesus, he called him, Jesus, get me out of here. I'll repent now to you. I'll never do those things again. Let me out of here. I've been here for years suffering. I relive everything I ever did. And the Lord said, peace be still. And the Lord began to cry over his soul. And as I looked at him, I said, Lord, what did he do to deserve this? He said, he used to be a preacher of my word. He used to have a fine car, a beautiful home, a fine church. But Satan tempted him to steal from the church offering, and he did. Then he tempted him a, a year later to do something else in the church wrong, and he did. And he had the Holy Spirit. And he said the Holy Spirit began to talk to him and tell him, don't do these things, but he would listen. And as time went on, his heart was hardened. And he used to preach the true gospel, and he began to compromise my word. And see, Jesus said, this man had tasted my gifts, he had healed the sick, he had done many great things in my name, he had preached the word in my name, and he was full of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit departed from him because of the devil entered into his heart, and the, he, he allowed it. And the day come when the Holy Ghost left him, that the devil entered in his heart, and he began to change. And, and you know, as I, I am telling this, I'm thinking about many ministers going to be watching this. And they need to repent. If they're out there, they need to repent because that blood will set you free. Don't stay hard in your heart. And I watched as Jesus said, I came to him myself. I manifest myself to him. And he wouldn't listen. I sent prophets. I sent apostles. I sent, uh, for months and years, I tried to change him. But the day come, he wanted to open up a seminar in town against the Holy Ghost, teach against him knowing better he knew better and he said what happened he was killed in a car wreck when he left the church and this is where he is and he said there's absolutely nothing i can do about it and we just left that crying i did too
as Christ and I went on our journey night after night, what I learned, he talked about his blood in hell. That if they had received him, no matter what they did, he would have washed them clean by his power and his blood. Because when he was crucified, that's why he did that, to save us from eternal damnation. If we would believe he was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then I learned something. As I'm walking with him and talking with him, I learned out of the book of Galatians, there's 17 works of our flesh. He took and he showed me a valley full of murderers. They had died on the earth. They were, their main thing they did in their life was to murder people. They had to be millions. And I began to look at a vast number. They were skeletons chained together. And they were burning and screaming. And then he said, I want to show you people that have hate in their heart. He showed me a valley without number. And these were also uh, chained together, burning and screaming. And demons walking through torment them. And some of them were literally pulled apart and taken all over hell and they were screaming. Each part of the body was screaming. And I thought, oh my God, what a torment. And then um, he showed me like uh, people in the cult, like I told you, in, in the center of hell. He showed me the murderers. He showed me the haters. He showed me the ones that are prejudiced. This is a subject that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but God does not see color. Listen, love knows no color of our skin. And what you have to do is love you one another as Christ love does. And we have to watch what we say because that brings roots of bitterness and hatefulness. And in hell, there was a section for people like that. There was a section in hell for the hypocrites. They were in the heart of hell. There was a heart of hell as big as a football field. And around the base of it was sewers from the earth that run around it. The stink was beyond your belief. And in the midst of this is rats. Rats big as uh, 70 pounds. They're real, they're not a spirit. And they bite on your souls. The torment of things you, you just don't understand because it's hidden from you. But as you look at this and as you listen and you understand the knowledge has been hid from us, revelation knowledge God wants us to see and know these things so we do not go to hell God wants us to have a, a, a knowledge and wisdom of what's down in the middle of the earth and when God begins to show somebody these things it's earth shaking on this journey in hell I was one night walking with the Lord and he said I'm going to show you the fun center in hell it's like a Roman theater and the devil is setting up in his throne at the top of this big rock place. It was all rocks. And it was similar to a Roman there where they used to torment the men, you know, and kill them, let the lions come out and eat them. Well, here was a Satan on his throne. He had a book out on a, on a big... Uh, he was in a chair, and the book was on a, like a throne, okay? And there was names on that. And then the demons had went through hell and picked out certain people and had them lined up, obviously skeletons, you know, and they were men and women, top of their voices, and they were crying. And the Lord said, this is horrible, but I want you to tell the people of the world about it. The devil would throw his head back and roar and laugh. And you could see him, he was solid looking. He had big horns, his face was red looking. He was very, very demonic looking. He looked kind of like the old movie, The Legend, is what he looked like. Had the hoof feet and everything. And he's sitting up there, and he's huge, he's so big. And they bring these uh, people before the throne. The first, I think it was a man. And all around the edges, there's these demons with spears and growling and laughing. And they brought this uh, person up in front of the throne, and uh, he opens up this book, and he said, Well, I see uh, when you were on the earth in uh, the beginning, you used to preach the gospel. That's what he called it, the gospel. And according to my report, you got many people to turn 
and their way stop the, he watched how he worded it okay he said you got many people to turn from uh, darkness into light that's what he said and he said I see here a list of the things you did so what we did the devil looked at him and said we sent out a crew of demons to stop you said we sent them out to come and to stop your works because you were doing too much uh, in the light that's how he would word it and he said uh, we deceived you and then I set a trap for you and killed you when you were in deep sin and that's why you're in hell that's what he told me he said I didn't give you a chance to repent said God he did say this he said God has grace and mercy why do not he said I had no mercy and he said all those that were in line with you I did the same to them they used to be believers on the earth and I thought about it and I looked at the Lord I said Lord he is truly a deceiver and a master art a master he said yes child it says all through the work he comes to kill still and destroy and he deceived these people that you see in line. And right at their vulnerable state, he killed them. Because they, they, uh, state, he killed them. Because they, they, uh, were in traps. They were in caves. And snarled by him, I should say, and snarled by him. And the devil began to laugh, and he said, the tormentors come and get him. Get her or him. What happened? She, this corpse was standing there, and they would each one would come and pull an arm off, pull the head off, the legs off, and, and the torso they had. So they would take that body where they pulled it apart, and they would scream. Every piece of that body would scream for the other part. And they would take it all over hell and bury it, laughing. After all this is done, then they scream so loud, their screams are heard. And I don't know by who, but he said God has mercy and sins power and puts them all back together again. Now that's horrible. That's horrible. And you think about what a what a wicked, wicked devil is, and you better get mad at him. You better get really angry in the name of Jesus. You better stand up, fight for your family because he's real. It's an unseen force, and that's why I preach. That's why I pray, and that's why I travel. To tell people, you know, it, it, to wake up, you know, time is short. The demons in hell, they can take on many shapes, okay? You can see one like three inches high would uh, swirl around the skulls of people. Say, we deceived you, we deceived you. You could have had Jesus, but we deceived you. For the lust of your flesh, one in God's commandments. And they would curse and blaspheme God. Now, these in hell I seem like animal creatures, okay? It may have been an illusion, okay? Because they are illusions in hell. The devil brings illusions, the false paradise and everything. But I've seen these with corpses on the back, some also, and burning and screaming. Even the horses was on fire. I was walking with the Lord on the valley of the shadow of death, and it was crawling in the muck beside me. It was huge, like a big bear. But I never saw its face, I just saw its backside. But I did see them in hell. They looked like humongous bears. And I think they've taken on the forms of the animals, you know, to bring more torture to people and more... Uh, I really believe that, as I'm even talking to you, I really believe that they have done this to bring heartache, more heartache to the people, like seeing a horse or a, a bear or something like that. Because they're all demons, they're devils. We go to the left arm of hell. And then the left arm of hell is a snake as big as a train, a locomotive. And it's real, it's not a spirit. And he said, Look at this child. And when I did, this snake would send fire out of its mouth and would come like three feet from us and go back. And the head of this snake was big as a locomotive train. That's how big. And he said, This snake will hit the earth when the world, the church is called away. That's exactly what he said. So I learned that all of these vicious creatures, heartless, have no mercy. They have no pity. The people that go to hell, they, they, they know they're doomed for the lake of fire. And they take out all their vengeance on one soul. A couple of times when God was, Jesus was showing me through the pits and the fires and 
the hypocrites in the heart of hell. And I went in there. I was so afraid. And a couple of times I didn't see the Lord. He allowed me. He allowed me to suffer in hell too, in the jaws of hell. And let me really feel like for a few minutes what it was like to be lost in hell. It's horrible. And with no relief or no help. And he did that because of the revelation of hell, like John the Red or Revelator had. And when you're chosen of the Lord to do certain things, he wants you to experience certain things. So when I was there with the Lord, I began to understand the living word of God. And I also saw, we talk about in the book of Revelations, the beast, and in the book of Daniel, with the seven heads. I saw that beast. In the, in the middle of hell, roaming and, and growling. The neck of that beast was about maybe, I don't know, real, real long. I didn't have, it was maybe five feet each neck. And on their heads was a crown. And their teeth, they were real. It was not a spirit. Their teeth are like razor blades. They go backwards and forwards. And he said these are seven major kingdoms against the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ what he told me. He said, child, these are seven major doctrines that do not preach the truth of Jesus Christ in the whole earth, and it comes out of hell. And he told me uh, about the abyss. He said there was demons and uh, evil powers down there so bad that if he was to release them, they would destroy the whole earth. That's how vicious they are. They're in chains and in jail cells. And they scream and growl and curse and neglect the chains. And we have to think about this. A place called Outer Darkness. Uh, I could hear demons converse, and Jesus let me hear it, okay? He said that he wanted me to understand how we're attacked by demon power. He said that, um, I want you to listen to what they're saying. There was groups of demons conversing and talking. And say you have an aunt, okay, say, that lives in Georgia. And she's saved and full of the Holy Spirit, loves God and goes to church. And the blood covenant keeps her, her family, her loved ones, okay? But say she has a niece in New York City that is in the street, she's on drugs, and the aunt's always praying for her. So these demons will send attacks to this child that, that she don't understand about the blood, she don't understand about the covenant, and cause her a great grief. Or they will go to a, a church where the power of God is moving. There's young people come in that mock the Lord, and they will speak to them sitting in the churches, and they will cause great commotion even on the, outside the church. They do this to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord told me. He said, where he has a band of angels that fight for the truth, there's groups of demons that go up to stop the gospel and from people believing. Like, for instance, they were talking about going to this person uh, that didn't have any faith, didn't believe in, caused chaos, you know, like um, fires or, or all kind of stuff. And what saves us from that is loving the Lord, having faith in God, and believing it. I'm just telling you some of the strategies that they use. Uh, even in one of the wars that broke out, I mean, it's coming to me, one, many years ago, uh, there was angels actually appeared to these men, the leaders, about the war and told them not to have that war. came and told them and they still had the war so we don't know you know we don't know and but we have to trust the Lord is the main thing and faith in God and be born again but even when you're saved we get attacks it's a battle we call it okay but how to protect ourselves from these things they must be born again okay must have Christ in their heart because they were always talking about going to a uh, relative that's far away that don't even know about Jesus, you know, and things like that. I did hear that. Yeah. 
And that's why it's important for us Christians to pray for our relatives, our bloodline, our generations. Now, when I was down there, I saw a vat of fire, huge vat of fire with liquid boiling hot lava and God's eternal judgment. And I saw demons laughing and dragging souls over that just died from, from the earth that it was called the abominables. And they're thrown in this liquid fire. The burn forever and ever and ever. The people really need to know this. They need to know that there is no coming out of that place. And they need to know that on the day of judgment in the book of Revelations, God shall speak and death and hell shall come up in the universe. They don't go into heaven. That's in Revelation chapter 20. And there, when the books of life are open, those people in hell, their books was never washed in the blood of the Lamb. And that's what it's all about. We have a book of our life in heaven. That right now, if you're not born again and you're not saved, what happens? They keep recording your bad deeds. You just know that. But when you get born again on the earth and that blood washes you clean, that record's taken to heaven by angels. And then it's recorded in, in your book. But all these old things here, angels blot out all your sins and all your old transgressions. It's a Bible said, I even, he, I, even I am he that blotteth out all your old transgressions. And then these pages become crimson red. And then they take your book, and they record it in your book. The minute you got saved, the sermon you heard, they record everything that God did. And they close the book up, and they take this before the book of the throne of God. April 3rd, 1986 was a big day that changed my life. In 1985, I drove a motorcycle under the influence and got into a traffic accident. I then went to prison. My wife asked for a divorce when I was released from prison, and I set up a thorough plan to kill eight people. My wife, her family, even child relatives who encouraged her to get the divorce. The last thing I did before executing this plan was to meet my mother in Guangzhou. Then I booked a train ticket leaving for Seoul at 10.40 p.m., and it was the night of April 3rd, 1986. While I was at my mother's house, I heard a resonant voice that I've never heard before 40 minutes prior to getting on the train. It was so loud and thunderous of a sound that it almost split my ear. Look, look, it said. Feeling too strange, I went out the front door and looked around, but there was no one. Second-guessing myself, I returned to the bedroom and I was about to light a smoke. Suddenly, the room became bright. I was surprised and looked at the bedroom door in the confusion of the moment, and at that instant, I yelled in shock. While a clear rainbow light was flowing down, there was something walking down in the light. Looking over it, it was a person who wore white clothing. Due to the bright light, I couldn't see its face clearly, but it was human-like. After a while, a rectangular horse-drawn carriage was following behind him. There were three seats on the carriage, the center one was empty, and two people wearing white clothing sat on both the sides. If someone who believes in Jesus saw the scene, he would have been touched greatly, but I was just stunned because I was an atheist man. A strange point I should add is that I felt my burning hatred disappearing. I woke up my mother who was sleeping by me, but she didn't seem to see the scene and she ignored me saying, don't be ridiculous, then went to sleep again. When I looked back at the carriage again, I was startled. A person who looked like me was sitting on the center seat, which was previously empty. I touched him to make sure he was real. It was like I was looking in a mirror. As soon as I sat down on the seat, the carriage took off. After that, I got to clearly witness heaven and hell. After passing a dazzling and brilliant golden road, I passed by a place where people like me were walking along a flower garden road, smelling the flowers. I was able to see people came from all over the world. I clearly saw my uncle's face on my mother's side, who had been a Christian and died of a disease. However, I couldn't find any disease marks on him. 
His appearance looked like a youthful 30-something with a young face and body similar to how I saw him when I was in the third or fourth grade in elementary school. Peace and happiness, absent of any anxieties and concerns of the world, was apparent on his face. Hearing a continuous booming musical sound, the golden carriage was passing by brilliant gold houses after driving for several days. When we arrived here, the angels, who wouldn't answer whatever I asked, eventually said, Here is heaven, with a very clear voice. There were an uncountable number of houses which were stretched out into the horizon. A common point that I felt from those brilliant golden houses that I've never seen on earth was that all of them were neatly organized and looked ready and waiting for an owner to move in. Unlike where my uncle was, I was unable to see anyone here. I asked the angels about it, but they didn't answer me. The carriage was suddenly entering a dark place, as if it were night. The only source of illumination was a bright light the size of the full moon. It was in the shape of people, wearing white clothing like those who drove the carriage. The music I heard before had already stopped. Fear entered my mind before I was aware of it. I was scared, thinking, now that they've showed me the most beautiful things that I'll never see on earth, are they going to kill me? A light, human-like shape was illuminating a person before I was aware of it. I got to witness my father, who had died six years ago. He was the breadwinner and took care of family matters. He successively held the position of a Confucian scholar principal. While he was alive, he issued an impetuous order for people to stop talking to him when he heard them say the J of Jesus. When this man was on his deathbed, he became miserable and his body swelled so much it could burst. Now before me, I saw my father suffering from pains as if he were approaching death again. Blue, venomous serpents with triangular heads, enough to hide his ankles, were bloodying my father's body, crawling, wrapping around him, and biting him all over. I was crying in despondency and calling out to him, but, but he didn't seem to hear me at all. The second place I went to, a large number of people were gathered in a crowd trying to escape from a fire on an extremely huge iron plate similar to a grill. Simply, it was pandemonium. I met another acquaintance here. He was my father's older brother, who, having lived like a miser, said that money was everything. He was not able to hear my voice either. At the place spotlighted by the third light, I witnessed a friend who had died in a traffic accident. Three dreadful yellowish-brown serpents were squeezing him so strongly, wrapping coils around him, thus his face was turning pale. This friend had also loved drinking like me, but he was eventually the one who was dead due to alcohol. At the place spotlighted by the fourth light, I was able to see people who were immersed up to the waist in the deep swamp. Unknown small black beasts were making them bloody, biting and clawing all over them. I was able to recognize two people, a relative and a childhood friend among the people who were inevitably suffering trying to escape the beasts, ruling their bodies left and right. I didn't know it at the time, but I found out that the relative had been going to church simply because they heard that attending church cured disease. They had no true faith. He wasted his time attending church half-heartedly, having one foot in church and the other foot in the world. My father I saw in hell and my uncle I saw in heaven. As I have recounted, the hell I saw was an unimaginable, atrocious place. I clearly saw my father, uncle, friend, and relative in the dark and wretched place. There was nothing I could do but cry at them in tears. I, uh, someone who thought everything ends after death, faced the truth. After witnessing hell, the carriage stopped at a place called the Judgment Platform, from Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. Here I saw something called reminiscence, where all of my sins that I committed with my eyes, hands, feet, and even mind since birth were recorded. I was not able to count the number of my sins I committed during my life because it was categorized into 132 categories, and each category had subcategories. Among them, I got to see that the largest number of sins branched off of actions that I made due to drinking. Another thing I found out is that there were two items that are not sins in the real world, but sins in heaven. 
one is not to believe in Jesus, and the other one is to curse at or be contemptuous with others who do believe in Jesus. All of my past sins were recorded, even with the date and time, such as not attending church, tearing and throwing Bibles and hymn books into a fire, cursing, being disrespectful, uh, getting stringent with evangelical friends, even slapping them and kicking them. I asked a question that I was wondering all the time here. Why do you show these places to me, someone who hated Jesus exceptionally and committed all kinds of sins rather than to someone like my brother who went through fire and water to believe in Jesus? An angel beside me gave me an answer. It's not necessary for people like your brother to come here. Someone like you will not be able to witness to others about heaven and hell until they see it with their own eyes. That was it. It was an answer corresponding to the Bible verse which states that someone like my brother, who can believe without seeing, will be blessed more. Soon afterward, the carriage began to move again. Suddenly, I heard a loud and sonorous voice ask pressingly, Will you believe? This voice was the same one that I heard before leaving for Seoul in order to kill those eight people. Even though I've never accepted God as my Heavenly Father before that time, I was willing to receive God, naturally answering, Lord, I believe in you. God continued to say, When you go back to the world, testify about heaven and hell to others. Don't add or take anything away from what you saw. When departing, the last thing he said was, I will keep watching over you. I felt like I had been on a long journey for many days, but it was just 11.10 p.m. when I woke up, feeling scared. This all occurred in the space of 70 minutes. There was no concept of earthly time there. Coming to my senses, my mother was staring at me with an intense face. She said I was mumbling some unknown words to myself and that I wouldn't wake up, even though she tried to wake me up. Right after that, I told her exactly what I had just seen. My mother, who was always shouted out whenever she heard just the J of Jesus, came to tears after hearing of the story of how her husband suffered. Just like that, my mother and I became disciples of Jesus and took baptismal education, then became involved in the church the same day. She became a passionate person who enthusiastically attends church as much as I do. At this moment, my life changed 180 degrees. I became a person whose lips naturally speak words only giving glory to the Lord Jesus rather than to myself. I was able to become and continue to be a missionary doing the Lord's work. The last order that God gave me which is always present in my mind, I will keep watching over you, is what brought me here.